Hello everyone, my name is Clancy's and welcome to the clan. So without further ado, let's get into this video. But before we get into the video, well, is it back? Is it not back? You know who I'm talking about. Hey, whenever you see that spatula or the spoon, you might just know that I am turning some few things around or I am dishing you what needs to be dished. Coming from Rata Mukhwatling's courtroom at the North Gauteng High Court. But guys, as you already know, we are only going to be back at the North Gauteng High Court on the 13th of May 2024 when they return from, only goodness knows what, pre-trial? Is it going to be a pre-trial? What, what, hey, what's going on? <laughs> no, no, honestly speaking, I'm asking a very honest question here. My friend is here, invisible, who's asking, like, what exactly is going to be happening on the 13th? Is the defense going to accept the new documents that are being submitted by Bada? Probably at this point, they are tripping over each other, making sure that all the new information that needs to be submitted so that the judge accept them because after that, the judge probably has already told Bada that after that, bro, I cannot do anything. Everything that you have to cook, cook now and submit on Tuesday. Do you know the entire day today, I've been wishing I was a fly on the wall. That is if they have met and listened to exactly what was discussed, what was the arguments, what were the submission, what was Baloy saying to the judge and what the judge was saying without cameras in favor of Baloy. I wish I was a fly on the wall. Honestly speaking, I'm still asking myself, was it fair? Is it going to be fair when they come back on the 13th of uh, May 2024? Will the Rata have a new manipulative tool called a 1928 like Rex versus Hypers for the new, what I consider is going to be a new trial? It, what are we going to be hearing on the 13th is what I want to know. Because I feel like Rata is going to come and say, right guys, we did discuss about this case, right? So we're going to keep uh, Rex versus Hypers on the side. Now we're going to be dealing with this one. This one gives the judge all the powers. Of course, the judge does have all the powers. But there's no need for you to remind the defense. Only thing that the defense is asking you to do, together with a lot of South Africans that are watching what's going on in, the, uh, in that courtroom, is fairness. It's you treating the state exactly the way you treat the defense. The way you treat the defense, treat the state. And most importantly, this is about people's lives. At this point in time, they are innocent until proven guilty. They can't, they can't be treated as though they are already convicted. I get it. Accused number five, accused number four, accused number three, and recently with accused number one, they are convicted for other crimes. We are not about those crimes. We don't know what they did. And indeed, since they've been found guilty of those crimes, they deserve to rot in jail. But for the Senzo Meiwa one, no. They are not the right people who kill Senzo Meiwa. The right people that kill Senzo Meiwa are out there at large living their lives. Because they know who killed Senzo Meiwa when they were together on the 26th of October 2020, uh, 2014. They know who killed Senzo Meiwa. So this charade that we are playing and now it looks like we are at a pre-trial situation because that's how it looks like to me. I don't get it. Honestly speaking, I really don't get it. Last night I posted something that I think I overlooked or I did not see it happen in court. The underhand tactic of by Baloy on Advocate Mnyeki. This is not the first time the state has played dirty. The state has played dirty I still believe that the so-called, uh, what do you call this, um, wardens that are in court, when they accuse, accuse number five, four, and three of being violent on them, simply because they were asked to not to sit in a particular manner in court, and yet everybody sits the way they want it during recess, why this particular uh, accused they cannot sit on top of desk. We saw Kretcher sitting right on top of the, those benches, there's nobody said anything. Why suddenly Uvusi, who thinks that is his furniture, now has a problem with accused number three, number four, and five sitting in a particular way. They're not running away. They are in shackles. Have you seen how heavily shackled they are? What are they going to do heavily shackled like that, sitting on top of those benches? That makes no sense to me. That was the first underhand tactic, or maybe there was prior underhand tactics. Then you remember when, uh, what's his name again? That uh, What's his name again? Zibanda. 
suddenly accusing Advocate Mshololo for things that Advocate Mshololo did not do. It was not even picked up by the, the, the what do you call this, the, what any of the SABC or ETV, what ETV, my goodness, I'm living in the past, uh, what do you call this, ENCA camera, microphones did not pick up Mshololo whispering from where she's sitting all the way to where the, uh, the witness was on the stand, whispering whatever it is. And this judge pretending as if um, Sibanda was telling some kind of a truth because all he had to do is do some follow-up on Sibanda. How can you hear that from that point? And then comes Baloi with underhand tactics again, lying about Mueki that all oh, new information has come to my attention regarding the new cell phone number. Uh, Advocate Mueki has already um, consulted with accused number three in the absence of Advocate Timnisi, and we canvas that with me and we discuss. And then did you see me? I was like, eh, eh, oh, how do I get? Huh? He was almost paralyzed on his chair because of the lies he was hearing about his name on that stand. I mean, on the floor by the state. And then Advocate Tim Shololo gets up on the floor and then says the exact thing that Baloy has done to Mnyeki. Dishonesty. She says the state is dishonest. The state is not telling the court the truth. And still... It did not take Baloy to prove Advocate Mshololo correct that he is dishonest, he's a liar. And then he had to get what is them, um, Advocate Mnyeki to get up and say, no, this is incorrect. This is incorrect. And the judge laughs of some sort. And I'm thinking, why is he laughing? That laughter made me very uncomfortable. It made me very uncomfortable. It was as if it says, yeah, I know the, the tactics you, uh, you Mnyekis and them do. Not what Baloy does. Why didn't he laugh when he heard Baloy making that submission about Mnyeki? But when Mnyeki gets up in objection, he has that laughter. That laughter, you know, you go to the short, go to the short. You will hear him almost, he's like giggling. And I was like, why is he giggling? Is he making a mockery out of uh, uh, Mr. Mnyeki? I don't understand. I didn't understand that part. And then you guys have been asking me another question. Well, maybe like... Uh, since I don't know when the story broke, I think the story broke sometime last week, either Wednesday or Thursday, regarding Kelly Kumalo basically losing gigs. And in my mind, I'm like, why is she losing gigs now? I mean, what I, I, I question the moral uh, stand ground of some brands and some event coordinators. There is a person whose name has been mentioned in court. Not once, not twice, since 2014, when her boyfriend dropped dead after being shot in her home. And they are still booking her for this and booking her for that. Why don't they say, listen, sis, go and clear your name first before we can associate ourselves with anything that has to do with what happened on the 26th of October 2014. Only now they are beginning to cancel shows. That's too late. Because I'm, I'm questioning your integrity as that particular brand or your integrity as an uh, event coordinator. I get it that her appearance comes with money. But what about principles and values? Has money done that to you that you don't care about the Mewa family, that you don't care about the rule of law, that you don't care that her name has come out to be the mastermind that um, commissioned the killing of Senzo Mewa? This is not the first time you are hearing that Kelly Kumalo may be involved in this case and only now you are canceling her? No, that's too late. That's too late for me. But I think it's a good thing that she's getting canceled. Maybe at some point when she realizes that her millions are depleting and this case is still ongoing, she might actually turn herself in and say, listen, guys, I want to have my day in court. Arrest me, charge me. And let me go to the court and explain and give you my version of the story of what I witnessed on the 26th of October, 2014. This is a charade. This is a charade. And again, which is the question that is, was asked about one of the killers or the killers of AKA and Tibbs, that since you discovered that there is a mastermind that paid 800,000 Rand into the account of one of the uh, alleged in Kabi's, 
why the, um, the, the mastermind is still not arrested? Just like the question we're asking about Kelly Kuma, Kante, how does the rule of law work in South Africa? That you already identified the source or possible source or alleged source of the commission of a certain heinous crime. But no, that person is at large. The small fish are the ones that have to take the rap. Who is that big fish that ordered the killing of AKA and Tibbs and paid 800,000 Rand as a result of that, as a thank you? So same thing with Kelly Kumalo. Why is she at large when she is being mentioned by the lead investigator that she is the head or the mastermind that uh, commissioned the killing of Senzo Meiwa, which I still think it's BS. I don't think it's her. Why not even a matter of I don't think it is not her period, but she has something to say about that particular day. She knows who killed Senso Mewa. She knows. So if she gets canceled to the last cent that she's got in her bank account, maybe that is going to push her. Maybe that's going to let her say, okay, guys, listen, this is where the story is. And then she tells it in an open court so that we get to hear how Senzo Meiwa died so that the family can get closure. So other than that, guys, this, those are my thoughts regarding everything that is transpiring in the Senzo Meiwa murder trial. And uh, please, guys, I, I, I know, I know, I know I ask a lot of you and I know you guys are so supportive and loving and all of that. Guys, I am on a 30-day live stream challenge on my other channel called Clancy's on Business. <laughs> you don't have to subscribe. All I ask of you is watch. You know, watch me talk about this great stuff that we talk about there. That's all. If you feel that this is valuable information because it deals with money, it deals with businesses, it, I, I do the work, the research and everything. I could... I could easily, easily turn this into a membership thing where I'm just dealing with my members of this particular channel. But I decided, you know what? Let everybody get the piece of the pie in any way that they think they can. Because you're the one who know yourself. You know your capabilities. You know your strengths. And then I put these business ideas and money-making uh, tricks and stuff like that according to your own strength and your own thinking capacity and so on and so forth. You know yourself, especially when you are not employed because the whole point of that channel is aiming at people that are unemployed. Or if you know somebody in your family or somebody in your neighborhood or somebody or you yourself, you are thinking, you know what, the, what I'm earning is not enough. I need an extra stream of income. I talk about those there, guys. And as a, as a matter of fact, it's stuff that you can do on your own time. Nobody's going to be on top of you asking you why you have not completed this work or why you are late and that. You can do this after work for an hour, two hour, and then earn some real good money. And you can add on to your salary and you earn in US dollars. Trust and believe me when I tell you these job opportunities and business online opportunities are stuff that I researched because I'm not going to bring something that is going to give you trouble along the way. They are well researched, no scams. I made sure that everything that I am talking about, it is legit and within the realms of the law so that you have the peace of mind when you are participating in these jobs all these businesses, you know that you are not being scammed. And I will say any line, oh, not any line, any uh, online job that requires you to pay any amount, that's a scam. I'm telling you now. And the jobs that I'm bringing to your attention, they don't require you to have any qualification, any experience, let alone pay any fee. The only fee perhaps that you are going to pay, but they bring it back to you, is other jobs they pay you through PayPal. And PayPal will ask you after opening a PayPal account if um, just to make sure that you are a human being they're dealing with and you have a bank account, they'll ask you to deposit a dollar into your, uh, that's about 19 Rand, or yeah, about 19 Rand 80 or something like that. Deposit that in an account um, that that way they can tell that uh, you are a real human being. And then they just return the money back. They don't keep it. They just want to confirm that you are a human being and so on and so forth. So then the money comes in, it comes directly into your account. 
You get what I'm trying to say here. Those are the things that I talk about there and other stuff as well that we talk about. We talk about YouTube, how to open a YouTube channel, how to grow the YouTube channel, etc., and so on. So I ask, please guys, support me there. I go uh, live every five o'clock in the evening, but I think I'm going to push the time now to about 8.30 because five o'clock, I feel like people are just arriving from work or on their way uh, home. And uh, so I think it's quite early. And on top of that, I also have YouTube meetings that start at six uh, some days. So I realized, oh, this is clashing because sometimes people are participating in those lives so much so that it goes beyond the hour. Sometimes it, could be, it would hit two hour live stream because of the conversations that we are having there. Please come support. I beg you. I need the watch time. It's all that I'm working for is the watch time. If you want to subscribe, if you find value, please do so. But definitely, I am committed to you, to you here. Here, you, I'm all yours. I, you, all yours. Oh, by the way, on the other side, we call ourselves business partners, not the clan. Because <laughs> I noticed when the clan goes there, they come there and say, what's up, clan fam? And we're like, no, here we are business partners. That's what we call ourselves. <laughs> but other than that, guys, thank you so much for listening. Please do not leave this video without giving a like. I know I did not say it earlier on because we are still on the job of triggering the YouTube algorithm to go fetch more honorable members of the clan when they come. Get up the two IQs together so they can spark their own opinions. If you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't like the video, give it a like. Anyways, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell notification so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Please let me know if you want him back or not. But other than that, you guys already know, I used to start with this stuff before. Uh, let's... Uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Let me know what do you, what do you think happened today when the judge and the advocates met, if they ever met. And also share this video far and wide. I'll see you next time in a new video. Goodbye.